Hey everybody, you're watching Ready, Set, Drone, and today I have Raviv Raz, who is the Chief Product Officer at Percepto. Today we're gonna to talk about the future of drones and what Percepto is doing to help move the future forward, so stay tuned. So, Raviv, it's great to have you on, man. How are you? I'm good, thank you very much for having me on. It's a pleasure. Yeah, man, thanks Thanks to your tech team for making this work. Uh, where are you right now? Actually, I'm, I'm uh, here in Israel, sunny Israel. Uh, it's uh, almost noon. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, what's it like in July in Israel? Is it hot? Very, 34 Celsius. I don't know how much that's in Fahrenheit, but it's, it's hot. It's hot. Say, same thing. Same thing here in in uh, Texas for sure. Um, I can totally relate. So, tell me a little bit about yourself. How did you get into uh, How did you get into doing drones, and uh, how did you start or help help uh, join Percepto? Okay, so uh, like you said, my name is uh, Raviv Raz. I'm uh, one of the co-founders at uh, Percepto. I'm a mechanical engineer, and uh, actually, I'm a pilot in the, the Israeli Air Force, a reserve pilot. When we got into drones, it was about uh, six years ago. I was uh, working at uh, a big uh, uh, aerospace industry here in Israel, one of the biggest. Um, I was uh, a flight test engineer uh, with large drones, about ten and a half. Uh, I was building drones on my spare time, and um, a good friend of mine, which is uh, currently the CEO of this company, I'll get to him later. We were uh, using drones for our uh, own fun and hobby, and uh, we thought. This might uh, this might be useful for commercial uses, and uh, actually that's how we ended up uh, in um, establishing this company and uh, co-founding it. Nice. So, what? Tell me. Tell me. Uh, you know, in in two minutes or less, what does Percepto do? Okay. So, Percepto, we offer a, a drone in a box on-site solution. When I say drone in a box, I mean uh, for industrial uses. I didn't say it before. Uh, a drone in the box means it's a fully autonomous drone. You don't have a pilot. Uh, it's on site, ready to use. It's one of the tools that uh, the factory or the uh, power plant or whatever industrial site uh, uh, it's installed in has um, uh, for its own usage. Uh, and what, so what kind of uses? What kind of things would they do with it? Okay, that's a great question. Well, when you think about um, uh, drones, the first thing you think about is security. Well, each uh, um, industrial site has a perimeter. They usually use CCTVs, and it's, I mean, it's straightforward. You have a, a, a camera in the air. You can move it anywhere you want. You can take any angle you want. You don't have trees in the middle. You can see anyone uh, breaching or uh, just for, you can use it just to patrol. So that's one of the use cases. And in our case, um, when you're using our system, uh, which I can elaborate a little bit uh, if you like uh, about it, you're just sitting in the control room using uh, 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 your screen and just letting the drone fly. You don't have to worry about anything. Our, we have the drone, the box, and the management system. Uh, the drone comes out of the box after it's fully charged. It can be a scheduled mission or maybe um, uh, someone touching the, uh, the fence. And it flies autonomously. You don't need a pilot. You don't need a remote. You don't need anything. It's just an autonomous cycle from takeoff to landing. And after you have the, the drone on site, well, you can use it for a lot of different, uh, different things. Uh, you can use it for uh, preventive maintenance. Maybe sometimes uh, your plant or your factory uses... A drone as a service or even people climbing the chimney checking for um, uh, damage or uh, uh, those kind of things and you're using it once a month and now you have a tool on site that's ready for use so you can use it every day every week you can schedule a mission you don't even need to fly it it can go collect the data come back and give you insights on that data so that's a second use case and of course there are the use cases of emergency uh, response and those Kind of things. So when you say when you say autonomous, you truly mean autonomous, like even to the point where it could be scheduled and it could fly out. Um, you don't even have to push a button; it just goes when it's supposed to go. Is that right? Exactly. Actually, that's exactly right. It's I don't know if you're familiar with the Roomba, 
uh, yes, sure. Uh, yeah, but you leave it at home, it goes, it bleeds, come back. You don't even know it does that. You just know there. You don't have your dogs here everywhere. That's all you know. So very good, very good. The, the What's the name uh, of this drone? It's the Sparrow, right? Exactly, it's the Sparrow, Sparrow One, and the the core uh, technology that we're using, uh, which, like I mentioned, we developed six years ago, was uh, a computer enabling. Um, an onboard module enabling real-time AI computer vision-based application. Well, it's a big word. Actually, what it means is the drone doesn't need to um, transfer video down or it doesn't need a link to the operator. It doesn't care. It does everything by its own, on its own, understanding the environment, understanding the mission, and actually giving you insight on the mission. So, like you said, um, the Sparrow, actually, it's here behind me. That's the drone we're using. Uh, it's an uh, industrial grade uh, drone. It has two cameras on board. It's water uh, resilient. It can withstand rain, snow, dust, anything you can imagine uh, uh, that you're on site and you need a tool, um, a commercial standard, and you need to use it um, at your own discretion. You don't want to care about the weather. What about the, the ability for it to recharge? How does that, I, I've looked a little bit on your website, but can you explain to the audience how that happens? How does it, how does it automatically go and, and uh, change batteries or recharge batteries? Um, we, um, actually, I live in a small town, a village, uh, a lot of agriculture around, and that's one of uh, my inspirations. I, I looked at John Deere's. Um, um, my father has a John Deere for 30 years and still works every time. So uh, when we designed the drone and the base station, we went to smart and simplicity. So we don't open the drone. We keep it sealed. We keep it closed. We charge the battery. We um, use the same technology like Tesla. Of course, we're not Tesla, but we use the same uh, uh, cell technology and the same uh, charging algorithms for long, very long uh, uh battery lifetime. So we charge the battery, we have a, a mechanism that opens, connects the base, the base uh, downloads all the data, the raw data from the drone, um, it checks, it has, let's say, after flight checks uh, for simplicity, and uh, it charges the drone. And you as a user, when you're, uh, I don't know, at the power plant, and you have about two or three uh, um, uh, uh, Sparrow systems, you just schedule a mission and the cloud management system just, it takes the best drone for that mission. The drone sleeps inside the box, recharges, goes out of the box, flies its mission, whether it's scheduled mission or uh, predefined mission, comes back, lands, recharges, and tells you I'm ready to go again. And it can do that like 24 seven or until you're done. I think if you, if you think about, um, military spec on one side and then uh, uh, commercial functionality on the other side and combine them together then you get an industrial grade drone where it can fly in rain dust every time it has to be precise it has to be ready when you want to use it it, it it's designed for um, hard abuse and use so I think that's the main difference. It's different materials, it's different standards, and um, it has to deliver 100% functionality. You can't have the tracker lose the person, you can't have the drone not land in the base station. You can't have a message like, no GPS, I can't take off, or something like that. And when you talk about fully autonomous system, when you don't have uh, a human in the loop, it has to take all the decisions for you or for the user, let's say. So it has health checks. It's based on AI in the sense that it knows when it's healthy. And if something starts to be wrong, high vibrations or temperature, or whatever, it has all the sensors inside and it uses deep learning to understand if something is wrong. And then it will tell you, I'm not taking off, you should call tier one. Actually, it calls tiers, tier one support by itself. So. So where where do you see the future of, of drones going in terms of uh, industrial drones? What what do you think will be happening five years from now, ten years from now? 
I think um, what well, when you think of uh, drones, you always uh, want to believe that you um, uh, order something online and get it to your doorstep by a drone. And a lot of people talking about drones autonomously flying in urban areas. Um, but what we really see is, uh, like I said, like we see it from our customers. Uh, we see um, the, the real need and real value in industrial and commercial sites. When you have a power plant and you have a, a very efficient tool, a tool that learns, a tool that that gives you insights, real insights, and never forgets. It's, it's like the best worker you'll ever have. Um, so we see that uh, value right now. And I think in five years, as more and more uh, uh, re um, the regulation will advance and more and more uh, industries will come to use Percepto, just like people are using smartphones uh, today. Percepto, I mean, and industrial uh, 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 autonomous drones. Well, if you if you could share uh, share anything else with my audience about um, uh, why they should check out Percepto or what they should know about Percepto, what would you want that to be? Where should they go to learn more? Well, as far as maybe social media or your website or anything like that. So we got our website. It's uh, www.percepto.co. Uh, you can find us in uh, on LinkedIn. Uh, we have an active Facebook, and we tweet from now and then. Um, and you can find out more about our partners, uh, where we're installed, uh, and the uh, companies we're working with. Um, and I think uh, that's about it. That's awesome, Ravi. Well, I, I, man, I really appreciate you taking the time today. Uh, I'm just blown away by the fact that we can have a real live chat uh, from Texas to Israel and back. That's really cool. Um, and again, thanks to your team for putting this all together and getting it scheduled and helping us work through the technical issues. It's been awesome. Thank you very much and uh, keep up the good work with your show. It's very interesting and uh, I like watching it. So if you liked this video and you want to learn more about Percepto, it's percepto.co, not, not com. So um, go there. I'll put a link in the description as well as uh, other places and check out what they're doing. I mean, this is, this is cutting edge stuff and this is something that's going to really impact the future of, of drones. Um, and it's, you need companies like this that are out there building these applications and building these drones if we're going to uh, use them for all the things we dream about using them for, deliveries and security and who knows, there's lots of stuff. If you like this video, I hope you'll give it a big thumbs up. If you want to ask some questions, I'll ask Raviv if he can, um, if he can check the comments and maybe he can answer directly in the comments. If people say something and they want to know an answer to a question, just comment below and I'll be sure to have him follow up. And if you want to see more videos about drones and the future of drones, please subscribe to Ready, Set, Drone. Thanks for watching.